What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because, well, maybe we shouldn't be excited. I'm bringing you guys a deck that a lot of people are gonna call a helmet and that is Border Control. Border Control is actually a very strong deck in today's format if you guys want to play an anti-meta deck. Because Inspector Border, yes, it's a great card, but you now have access to three-dimensional fissure again and that's insane in today's format. So for that reason, I think this deck could actually perform really, really well. Now, if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays for now it's going to be a ton of deck profiles post banlist deck profiles because the banlist just came out and i think it's going to shake things up so with that being said i don't want to take up too much of your time let's get right into the deck profile all right so just before we get started with the deck profile i do want to say inspector border may be one of the most powerful most broken cards in today's format just because it covers pretty much every single matchup which is absolutely insane insane so with that being said i guess it transitions us perfectly to start off here with three inspector border now unlike a lot of the other floodgates that konami just brought back from the ban list aka d fissure aka macrocosmo those cards aren't good into floundries yes those cards are good into every single other matchup and they're insanely powerful cards however specifically floundries which is one of the best decks in the game right now if we say tier limits is the best deck floundries has a strong strong second place just because of its ability to play fissure to play macrocosmo to play shifter so because foundries is so strong you also need to be able to combat that deck as well as the rest of the meta and the really cool thing is inspector border does that for you so it's really cool that you have one of the main pieces in the deck which is really good against the tier limits matchup it's really good against the foundries matchup the sprite matchup the dragon link matchup this is such a good card so we're playing three inspector border here of course three fossil dyna fossil dyna is insanely powerful because essentially locks your opponent out of special summoning it and the really cool thing about both border and fossil dyna is the fact that this whole deck is just built around having these on the board and then protecting them you're protecting them with your floodgates you're protecting them with your traps you're protecting them with your spells you just want to protect these cards and as long as these cards stay up on the field you're pretty much winning the game so three border three dyna and a card that works really really well in this deck is three fenrir now fenrir is one of those things that's good going first and going second and i wanted to give this deck an option where if you are forced to go second you can still play right because the thing is with these floodgate based decks is going second it is a little bit more tough to play however fenrir gives you that option because if you're going first you can just start off your turn by special summoning the fenrir especially in combo with fossil dyna if you just start your turn by specialing fenrir normaling dyna now you have two bodies on the field you have protection for the dyna potentially with whatever back row you have and then you have a banish with the fenrir as well which is really really powerful and fenrir is really good because it does help you push for a little more damage to help the speed the game up so fenrir specifically is really really good in this deck yes it doesn't synergize as well with your border because border can't be normal summoned or special summoned if you control a monster so for that reason you you would have to set the border which is not as good obviously but fenrir is a very powerful card specifically paired up with fossil dyna and again going first and going second is really good then we're playing the one terraforming as well as the two necro valley the one zombie world and three metaverse now why are we playing zombie world well we just lost mystic mind we don't have access to mystic mind but zombie world is really good because remember i was talking about how the floundries matchup is probably going to be one of the better decks of the format well for that reason you do want main decks outs to it as well as just cards that are really good against everything in the meta and zombie world is really good against floundry specifically it's pretty good into other things as well but against floundry specifically it's insane but and then on top of that necro valley is just really good of course against the tail limit matchup and then now with metaverse you have ultimate consistency to be getting into them which is really really nice so we're playing the three metaverse here then we're playing three raigeki and one harpy's feather duster now you guys might be wondering why would you play raigeki and harpy's in a deck that wants to go first and set up floodgates it's true you do want to go first you do want to set up floodgates but this deck struggles insanely going second that's why we're playing the fenrir's for example and that's why we're also playing the raigeki raigeki also pairs off really well with the dimensional fissure which i'm going to get into in a second but if you just activate your fissure and then activate raigeki that's just so insane in today's format so that's why i think raigeki is really really good this deck is really Really built to go first but it's also built so that you can withstand pretty much any deck going second as well so the three raigeki and the one harpies of course is very very relevant then we're playing the cards that are essentially the anti-meta cards the one of the best cards or two of the best cards i should say in the format today and that is three dimension shifter as well as three dimensional fissure now here in this deck you guys can see that we're not playing the macrocosmo as well you guys can see it in the side deck i'll talk about that right now so pretty much the reason i decided not to play macrocosmo with these is because i felt like it was a little bit overkill in 
in this deck you're also playing rangeki which is also really good because again if you are forced to go second macrocosmo is just a little bit slow but if you just activate your fissure like i said activate rangeki that is insane that's just actually loki a combo and it's an insane combo right so these six cards right here is all you're really gonna need shifter again is also really good going second of course going first it's really powerful but going second as well shifter is really powerful so that's why i think these combinations of cards cards like shifter which is good going first and second fenrir which is good going first and second you have regeki which is really good going second your fissure is good going first or second like there's just so many good cards in this deck that are good in any situation which is why i think these six are all you're going to need and then you're going to be playing three there can be only one there can be only one is really good into a lot of the meta decks the only deck i think in the meta that can kind of play around this is tier limits even then they kind of struggle to play around it but they can always get to their heartbeat and end up popping this card so for that reason there can only be one is not great against the tier limit matchup but again you have so much hate against tier limits anyways you have shifter you have fissure you have necro valleys here you have the borders you have the dinas so you have so much hate against the tier limit matchup specifically that there can only be one is one of your other outs against the floundries matchup against the sprite matchup now sprite kind of has a tough time playing around this as well so for that reason it's kind of like hey look we're covering the Flunderies matchup with this and the border. We're covering the tier limit matchup with the six cards here with the Necro Valley and the border and the Dyna. We're covering any matchup pretty much because all your floodgates are built to beat pretty much any deck and you're always going to be opening, especially because you're playing three of everything now, you're always going to be opening some combination of them, which is really good because that means any matchup essentially you're going into, you're going to see something that's good into that matchup. So that's why we're playing the three. There can only be one. We're playing three Pot of Prosperity, of course, to get us into anything that we're missing. Again, it's one of those decks where it's like hey i opened there can be only one and i opened a dimensional fissure let me see if i can now dig into something like a crackdown which i'm going to get into in a little bit or i can dig into one of my normal summons right so now you're pretty much setting up where against any single matchup you're going to have something to combat that matchup so that's why i like prosperity same thing with duality duality does conflict a little bit with the fenrir however i think duality is just way too important to not play getting the extra cards is really powerful so that's why we're playing duality duality and prosperity also work well together i get comments on this all the time duality does not draw it adds to your hand so you can activate prosperity then activate duality that's a very real thing all right so that's why we're playing the two duality then we're playing three crackdown crackdown is meant to essentially just help negate your opponent's boards it's really good against a lot of matchups the floundries matchup as well but it's also really good because it protects your fossil dyna it protects your border where if your opponent can somehow make a monster that's bigger than it and you don't have cards to protect you this is another card that's going to protect you so that's why i really like three crackdown and then three solemn judgment because i feel like a lot of people are going to be prepared for the fissure for the macro cosmos so people may be main decking a lot of macro hate so for that reason i really like the main deck solemn judgment but solemn judgment in general is just really good this deck i think is insanely powerful because it's really good going first and it's really good going second and it's not one of those things where it's like i put some cards good for going second i put some cards good good for going first it's like no all of these cards or a lot of them other than the regeki really is really good going both first and going second which is really insane so 40 card main deck and then you guys can see here i literally have 11 cards in my extra deck you know why because it does not matter it literally doesn't matter you guys can literally look at this and be like oh spinkle why are you playing 11 i'm playing 11 because this is all you're gonna need and honestly you're barely even gonna need these right so the other four cards fill it up with whatever your heart desires i think these cards are really powerful the ones that i'm showing you right here we're playing the two garura of course for super poly in the side deck same thing with mud dragon same thing with starving venom same thing with draco stapilia just all super poly targets same thing with the one predator plant trife Vertium. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but this card is also really good against the Dragon Link matchups. If they're putting up multiple dark monsters, like three dark monsters or more, you can break the entire board with Super Poly. And then, funny enough, because Clockwork Knight has come out, I think Cyber Dragon is gonna get kind of cheeky and you might see it pop up here and there. So I'm actually playing the one Mega Fleet as well as the one Fortress Dragon. For if you ever see the Cyber Dragon matchup, you can actually low key break their boards with these cards. So for that reason, that's why I'm playing these two. But again, that only amounts to 11 cards. So the last four cards to your heart's content. Whatever you guys want to play, you guys can play. Literally, it doesn't matter because you're setting up border, fissure with there can only be one or you're setting up like dyna fissure with a crackdown you're you're winning the game this is just so in insanely powerful so that's why as long as you have the fissure as long as you have shifter up you're pretty much playing against any tier board if you have zombie world access which you will with metaverse then you have ability to beat any of the fundaries matchups especially with border especially with there can be only one you're hitting every single deck with this which is insane then for a little pseudo side deck i just want to show you guys this side deck you don't have to build it the way i have it built right here this is just kind of one of those things where it's a template now of course everybody's locals is a little bit different if your locals is all flunderies players make sure your side deck is 
built for a lot of flunderies. If your local is a bunch of tier limit players or sprite players, you build your side deck accordingly. I just wanted to give you guys a quick template. We're playing three Lava Golem, of course, helps you break boards going second. We're playing another Zombie World as well as two Imperial Iron Wall. These cards are essentially against the Flunderies matchup. Again, the Shifter and the Fissure are not really good into that matchup, so you're going to be siding these in. The Super Polys is also really good into the Flunderies matchup. Funny enough, you might be thinking, but if they put up Barrier Statue, it's not that good. Well, I don't think a Flunderies player is going to be putting up Barrier Statue against a deck that just wants to summon Border, right? Like putting up Barrier Statue is not the best play for them, especially if they don't see the Fenrir, let's say in game one. You can side in the Super Poly and you can always make Garuro, which is really, really powerful. We're playing three Lightning Storm and three Macro Cosmo. The reason we're playing the Macro Cosmo is in the side deck is because if we know we're going first, let's say into a game two or a game three against a tier limit matchup, you side in the Macro Cosmos, just more hate against them. And the Lightning Storm is also really good into the Flow Underies matchup. But these could be evenly matches. There's so many different cards you guys can play in the side deck that is actually going to be really relevant this format. So don't build the deck exactly with this side deck. I just wanted to show you guys this side deck as like a quick template. But again, I think this deck is nuts. You do not have to worry about Imperm or Veiler or Droplet, which is really powerful. I mean, Veiler doesn't really do anything anyways, but Imperm or Droplet, which is insanely powerful. You have access to three Fissure, which means you have access to beat pretty much any tier matchup. I think you guys should give this deck a go. Like, I think you guys should give it a try. I know the Fenrir is a little bit expensive. Actually, I'll just say this before I end the video. If you guys are looking to build this deck and being like, yo, Spanko, I have everything. I can build everything, but I don't have Fenrir. It's okay. You guys can actually cut the Fenrirs and play something else there. I just think Fenrir with Dyna specifically is really nice because it protects the Dyna. But uh, yeah, you, you don't need to be playing the Fenrir. I know it's a little bit expensive, so don't worry. You guys can cut these three cards and put in any other three cards. Put in maybe the Macro Cosmos, even main deck the Super Polys if you want to. But Super Poly kind of conflicts with Fossil Dana, right? So maybe not the Super Poly, but you know, you guys can play other cards essentially to help you go first and or second. More Floodgates potentially, whatever you guys want to play. I know this is expensive, so don't worry. You guys can cut these. It doesn't affect the deck so much because the deck, again, is revolved around making Border, making Dyna, making one of these two cards with Fissure, with Crackdown, with There Can Be Only One, with Judgment, or if you're going second, you have like Regeki access. This deck is insanely powerful. Just try it out. I'm telling you, just try it out. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Border Control, yes, it's a helmet deck. Yes, it's a deck that's just gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna flip my floodgates and you're gonna lose. But the thing is, it's very, very relevant. It's good into the flu matchup. It's good into the tier matchup. This deck, low key, you'd be surprised. If you took it to locals, I'm sure you guys can top some locals. And you guys are gonna see the odd anti-meta deck top regionals here and there. I think this deck is very, very powerful. Now, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel. Deck profiles, dual videos, combo replays, product openings, all that good stuff. You'll see it right here on the channel. So make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned into all that. Thank you guys all for watching. We're on the road to 8,000. Let's make it happen. I believe in the Spanko squad. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.